is the Jeff Santos Show. Here it is, the Jeff Santos Show. Coming to you live from the South Coast here in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Uh, we are going to be going to the 206. Yes, Seattle WA with the Kraken are still playing some great hockey. And, of course, the Mariners uh, and the Seahawks are uh, you know, had a, had, Mariners had a great season. It's now over. And, of course, um, the uh, Seahawks are still there, still fighting the good fight. Well, nobody better to talk about all that and more in the great music scene in Seattle our good friend, he is the Renaissance Man of the Jeff Santos Show, the Executive Director of Democracy Watch News, Mr. Mark Taylor Canfield. MTC is in the house. Yeah. Welcome, welcome. Hey, That's a new guitar, work. isn't it? Look at this. It's so new. Listen. The tag oh my, is still on the it. Price tag on it. Wow. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I was well, making. I know where all your, yeah, the your savings goes. Brand new. People say, "Why do you have so many guitars, Mark?" I say, "Well, you know, I mean, some people like boats, some people like cars. I like guitars." And also, they ask me, "How many do I have now?" And I say, "You know, I don't really know because I've lost track. Some of them are wow. in storage. Um, most of them are at the studio, not not where in my home." So. Yeah, I, I do lose track sometimes. Every once in a while, I'll pull something out of the closet and go, oh, I haven't played this in five years. This is amazing. But we just got back from the World Cup. I should be wearing sunglasses because my eyes are so blurry. We've been up wow. all night. There was an art walk party at my friend Steve Gilbert's rock photography gallery. And then uh, we ended up doing an all-night recording session and then got up very early this morning because the World Cup games are in. So that means I have right, to right, be right. up so at very early in the morning because they're very early on the East Coast. So I can imagine it's like 6 a.m. in the West yeah. Coast. And then we just finished with Argentina yeah, but, winning well, over the Netherlands. I watched a little bit of that, you know, when I could. Oh, you know, I had a buddy there from the Netherlands. So he's heartbroken. And earlier today, uh, uh, the, earlier this morning, uh, poor Juliana, sweetheart, I, I know you'll get yes, over it in I a heard. year or two. By 2026, when Seattle hosts the World Cup, by then I think you'll be over it. But... <laughs> Yeah, uh, Brazil lost number one ranked team in the world. So yeah. that was a I huge. Mean, you know, it's really, I mean, I know the Brits will say that, you know, they invented soccer, but the Brazilians have basically made it a yes. amazing sport, Pele and all that. Um, yeah. Well, look, um, it's fascinating. I, I believe that the World Cup, and I believe Portugal, uh, my, my background and uh, from their heritage, uh, still there. Argentina is there. Uh, Croatia, I guess, plays Argentina next, which is a real surprise, um, of course. Yeah. And, um, you know, so it's it's fascinating. It's interesting to see how all this goes down. And we're getting down tomorrow, to the uh, to the to the few. Yeah. Tomorrow is England and France. And, I, and I, our friend. Well, isn't that going to be London fascinating? There. Everyone yeah. met at this place called the Georgian Dragon in Seattle because it's the only bar in town, the only pub that will open up at 6 a.m. to let people in. So it was <laughs> packed with people. Uh, some of them drinking very early in the morning. Yours truly had no drinks today, so I'm good on that. But uh, we had so much fun. Particularly at 6 in the morning, practice. man. you got to be careful about that. The last-minute uh, goals just blew my mind. They had us on the edge of our seats through both entire matches. The Netherlands and uh, uh, Argentina was incredible. Massey is so incredible. So between Ronaldo, right, Massey with Argentina, Ronaldo with Portugal. Uh, you've got Mbappe. Uh, He's probably the best. He has more, I think, World Cup goals than uh, even Pele had at his age. Uh, Harry Kane with the, Eng the England team. I mean, these are incredible players. They're, they're such a joy to watch. They're so talented, and they're like they're world heroes. You know, in the United States, I think people are just now starting to get to know some of them. So it's been an exciting match. So there's been politics surrounding it too as well. Um, yes, but another person died. Is that right? In uh, in Qatar, um, you know that you know built the uh, the stadium and, and the surrounding um, you know uh, venues. Um, it's uh, not not good. And uh, there's this kind of callous idea that you know it's a human way of life that I think I heard some some officials say. But um, you know, and and of course, you know, it's it's the the buddy of of Saudi Arabia. So. Look, uh, well, you're right. Um, 
I'll tell you something that Go no ahead. one else is reporting. So the FIFA, though, the world soccer, well, oh, soccer in the United States, world football uh, regulatory agency, re, uh, bans any kind of uh, protest during the game. So if someone right, runs on right. the field, it's like, kind of like, you know, in the United States, they're doing that now with baseball games and things. They, they'll just cut away. They're not going to show you who's out there, what they're doing. Well, there there was somebody on the field uh, protesting for LBGTQ rights, and that's another big mm-hmm. issue. There was also oh, yeah. some controversy um, between other countries that are there. And then this grudge match today between Brazil, or excuse me, between Argentina and the Netherlands. I had no idea. It's gone on for decades and decades. And I would, I mean, they were about ready to break out in fist fights today. The roughs had their hands full yeah. trying to keep people yeah, they did. off each other. It was, it was so amazing high, with, the, with the penalty high, kicks. High you know, I love that when you have all those goals and, uh, you know, somebody likes to see more offense in the, in the game we call soccer, but the uh, Europeans and the South Americans call football. And I, I think that, um, you know, it was very exciting. And, of course, tomorrow, I mean, talk about the history, France and, and the U.K. Oh, oh man. That's going to be, that's gonna be uh, pretty amazing stuff. So it, it's, it's great. Yeah. And, you know, we, we get down to these, these few. And, and I remember being in, in, uh, in the North End in Boston, heavily Italian district, when Italy played France, I think it was 2006 maybe, uh, World Cup. And, uh, boy, was that fun, you know, to be, with, you know, with the Italians uh, there and uh, when they won. Uh, fascinating. So it, it, it is uh, it is a great thing, and I'm glad that more and more Americans and people in the United States are, are there. The United States had a, had a pretty good uh, run, you know. Um, uh, so it's um, it was, you know, pretty impressive. It, it, they played very good defense. Unfortunately, you know, a couple of mistakes by their, uh, by their uh, you know, defenders that uh, did them in in the end but uh very overall, young team very young team very oh, they're young. all coming back experienced yeah. in world cup play Polisic is an amazing player though look for him to be a superstar i'm sure he'll go places for sure he's a great player yeah for sure um hey you know um i was uh, listening to an interview today with uh with winker uh the left fielder of the mariners and um you know he is of course um uh, now with milwaukee and you know that they just put up a graphic of all the different red sox players that are now spread around bogart's now going to san diego and this is awful mookie in los angeles and it's uh it's really crazy but you know i'm 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 fascinated by by the fact that uh seattle has really taken you know i mean they've always been big football fans you know the 11th man and uh the 12th man i should say uh, you know, there in, 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 in Seattle. And of course you have, uh, the great work of, uh, of Gino at, at quarterback and, um, uh, Mariners first time in 10 years or, or more than that, um, 11 years coming into the playoffs. Um, Wilson until, until he bailed and went to Denver and now they're losing, which is, you know, I have the song, Russell Wilson, the new kids in town. He can run it. He can throw it for another touchdown. The smartest athlete yeah, in yeah. the NFL. He's always icy cool, so he cannot fail. But now I need to make up one about Geno Smith because there you go. I'm sorry, but he took the money. He went to Denver, and they they went downhill. I mean, nobody's talking about Russell Wilson this year. They're certainly not talking about an MVP. Although every once in a while, Geno Smith's name comes up because I think he's got some of the best – uh, percentages in the in the NFL right now. Some of the least uh, interceptions next to Brady. And that game against Brady was woo, head-to-head. Geno Smith and Tom Brady going at it. That was a great game in Munich. Yeah. Or Munchen, actually, is how they pronounce Munchen. it. Munchen. We call That's it. right. I've, I've been there. Munchen, exactly. It's, it's, yeah. Remind me to talk to you about um, about my time. This is years ago in, 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 um, in Munchen. And uh, this... Um, this this American tourist who was in, inebriated um, quite a bit. Oh no! This, uh, this young woman who didn't know that she was in München and didn't know the difference between Munich and München. But anyways, it's a long story. Another day when we finally yeah, get to Seattle side. over uh, a point. Yeah, <laughs> I have a little video up at YouTube, and it's about Americans' view of soccer and this culture clash. You know, like Americans, we want Tom Brady to score forty points. You know, this idea of zero to zero draw in the first round. What? Why did we even play? Nobody even scored. Why yeah, did no, I spend nobody 90 even minutes? scored exactly? Right. That's America. <laughs> and we also anglicize all their names, so nobody could figure out why it says ESP on the scoreboard. They're like, "What is the extra?" Well, you know what? You know what freaks me out is they put the colors on at least on the on the Fox network. 
they put the colors of the uniforms, but the flags are different than the than the uniform colors. So I, I want to think it was um, maybe it was uh, France, and they were playing with you know like a kind of an orange color, but you know of course the the the, um, the, the red, white, and blue. That's just similar to the United France States. They're flying. Yeah. France yeah. and so Netherlands. So it's kind of confusing the to, the, to, the, to the viewer. Like, what are you watching, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah. So, and there's, I mean. I, I still don't like the idea that it, the countdown, you go up, you don't count down to zero, you go up to 94 and 95 or whatever. That's a little crazy. But look, I mean, that's what they've been doing for years. And, you know, who am I to come in and say, you got to change it? But it is a little bit different. Calls today that are going to end up in some reels because Massi, one of the world's best players with Argentina, Fantastic was player. playing all sorts of tricks out there. He was falling down and faking injuries and fouls when there were no fouls. And so the Netherlands team and their fans at the place I was at were taking offense. I was afraid there was going to be a bar brawl there for a minute because it got really tense. But it was a lot of fun. <laughs> you know, the, the Georgian Dragon did a great job of accommodating so many people and the staff there was very pleasant, and even though they were busy from 6 a.m. this morning until just a little while ago. So kudos to them for bringing the World Cup to Seattle. You know, this the Sounders FC, that's football club, folks, not soccer club. They also right, right, right. Um, hosted some watch parties here that I attended when we were watching the USA team, and they will be hosting the final game in Seattle. It'll be a Seattle Sounders event at, down at Seattle Center uh, down by Climate flight arena so i'll be there for sure definitely with yeah. bells on as they say there you go you'll be there um how is the weather really? in austin is it cold cold yes yes it's uh it was in the 30s uh in the evening and 40s now it's not too too bad but it's going to be cold again and get more rain coming it's been uh wacky with the with more more rain than we've seen all year i think which is good for the you know we got that much snow so, we wow. got a tiny dusting of snow. It freaked everyone out here. <laughs> it's a huge. I event. remember it's going to blizzard. Seattle and, and looking at what those trolley cars, and then looking at, at the, uh, you know, a lot of them have already been gone. But if you go, if you are are uh, going down some of those hills, you know, toward Pioneer Square, and you know it's snowing, icy. Oh no, no, no! You don't want to do that. You don't want to. You don't want to get stuck tail, in that kind right? of situation. Right, right, a exactly. Fish tail. Uh, oh, wait, wait, talking wait, with wait, our wait. good friend MTC. Hey, I know that you were uh, in World Cup land, but you heard about the Christian cinema, you know, playing games and so forth, right? You know, it's it's so ridiculous. And CNN spent all their time today just, you know, talking about all this. And, uh, you know, it's it just, uh, we just had Representative David Cicilline on. And he's like, look, this is not that big of a deal. She's not going to do that much. But, you know, again, these people would run away from the progressive mantle. And, you know, we mentioned it again, FDR and, and the mantle that our good friend Harvey Kay and Ellen Ninsky talk about all the time and obviously put together the Economic Bill of Rights 21st Century Version. And that we talk about it on this show. You know, it's, it's people like her that, you know, that mainly end up putting the Democratic Party in in, in, a, in, a, in a awful position. Um, but again, it shows you need, we need more good progressives to run uh, like Ms. Sawant. You know, I'm hoping that I mean, we had talked about this before, you know, Murray steps down or Cantwell steps down, you know, Jayapal runs for the Senate seat, you know, Sawant runs for Jayapal's seat and you start developing all this, you know, enough of stagnancy, you know, I mean, well, Murray and Cantwell have been there for over 20, 25 years. So, you know, we, we need to, we need to, to turn yeah. it out. Yeah. I'm just glad yeah. to live in a state where for the moment, anyway, we, we ducked, you know, the, the uh <laughs> i still can't believe her last name uh anyway i'm not even gonna mention her name the republican candidate because she was just so off base with not even accepting the election results and stuff but we we survived that you know and patty murray won with 57 percent of the vote which you know sh she could do better i think if they had started earlier in promoting what bernie sanders was saying everyone should be doing which is talking about social security medicare protecting that also um you know, just talking about the one percent and how the Republicans pretty much support, you know, the oligarchy in this country. So that worked very well. I would love to see um, more progressive candidates in the U.S. Congress, of course. But I'm just glad that I live in a state right now, at least, where I can pretty much count on my member of Congress, at least, 
and our governor and a few other key members here in our in our local government to do the right thing. They always seem to be on the right side of these issues. So, you know, I'm so glad. But at the same time, I look at the rest of the country and I wonder what's going on uh, with especially places like Florida, Texas, Georgia. I mean, oh, man, there's such a backlash against anything that's even slightly liberal, you know, progressive. Wow. No, progressives are considered, you know, Marxist, you know, radicals that, you know, by people down there. So, yeah, even somebody like Joe Biden, who's middle of the road, you know, they're going to. OK, so we don't want to uh, forgive student debt. That might actually help people. Why would we want to do that? We want the bankers to bankroll themselves and buy more yachts. That's a great thing. I don't get it, Jeff, but um, I'm so disappointed that that's happening right now and that they're having to fight that battle because I know Pramila Jayapal was one of the the big def- you know promoters of that whole idea long before Joe Biden ever jumped jumped on it. You know what I'm saying? She was tweeting about it every day, just like Joe Sandberg is tweeting every day about. Um, the minimum, yeah, the minimum, minimum wage, wage yeah, 18 bucks about, in California, so important, it's nice so necessary. College education does get mentioned now occasionally, though, which is, I guess, a step forward because a few years ago, well, no you know, it's the progressive that. push, the Bernie push for going back to 2000, even 15, before he actually, you know, ran in, in the 16 primaries. And, you know, and he was talking about these issues on Medicare for all, on, on the issue of free uh, four year public universities, on the issue of minimum wage increase, on the issue of, of the ridiculous economic inequality in this country uh, and, and the wealth of, of the 1%. And, you know, I, I think it is, uh, it is percolating. Um, and we need to, you know, to amplify it even more. You know what Sawan is saying, we, you know, we can't amplify what Jayapal is saying or Bernie uh, or Warren or uh, Jeff Merkley. You know, I mean, there's a ton of people out there saying good things. You know, but, you know, the right wing media is not going to bring them on. They'll just crush them. And then, you know, and then, of course, on top of that, you know, the, the more neoliberal uh, Democrat network like CNN, um, they're not going to really bring them on either. Um, if it is, it's, you know, it's 30 seconds See, and, you know, you get off. So it seems to me that a lot of them, like AOC and Shama Sawan, they ran a, you know, the conservative business interests around here ran a, uh, a, you know, challenge to her to try to recall her. I think they spend so much of their time defending themselves. Like, remember, uh, well, when Ilhan Omar was first elected, what uh, the kind of crap that she had to deal with, you know, and still has to, yep. but you know, they spend so much of their time just trying to, to, you know, defend themselves from lies and slander, <laughs> you know, that uh, it doesn't give them as much time to do what they need to do. Somehow Pramila Jayapal has been able to duck under a lot of that. I don't know how she's, she's a, I guess she's not as a divisive uh, candidate um, in some ways. And I'm not sure what that is. I think it's just her personal style. She's just a, a bridge builder and a person who, you know, she's going to stand for what she thinks is right. And those are progressive causes, but she doesn't come across as someone that you can easily um, p- uh, pigeonhole or, you know. Right. Um, yeah. She's not, she's not, um, she's not super aggressive and she's not a uh, super aggressive personality figure. So, she works a lot she with others. That's why people. she's a leadership, you know. Yeah, and I think that's she's that's the quality funny. that you know Democrats could have. Look, you know, do you want hard charging? Yeah, you you have that with people like AOC. You have that with other uh, Democrats, particularly those from the, from the Northeast. Uh, you know, di- uh, you know. I mean, um, there are there are some in the African American community uh, as well that that have the the sort of you know uh, uh, Maxine Waters type of uh, personality as an example. Uh, hey man, I, we got to run here, but we're going to uh, we're going to talk to you next Friday. Of course, um, we'll be off here on the Jeff Santo show for a few days next week. But uh, looking forward, my friend, to um, uh, to chatting with you and seeing what the, the World Cup results um, next week. So uh, thank you for being uh, fantastic. The MTC report, check it out. Uh, you you too, everybody. Check it out. Thanks, Jeff. Best talk show in the country. It's an honor to be here with you. Thank you, man. Anytime, man. Thank you. Have yourself a great weekend, Mark. All right. I want to thank uh, Dan and Josh and Freddie Santori producing this broadcast. Remember, folks, we'll be off Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, back on Friday. A special show. We're going to go four in a box. More about that all week on the Jeff Santos Show website. Until then, have yourself a great weekend, a great week. My name is Jeff Santos, and I got to go.
beating England. 